Hi everyone, we're going to do our next video now, and today we're going to meet Christine, who lives full-time now in this beautiful camper and Toyota pickup combination. Say hi, Christine. Hello. And uh, you've got, you are working from, still, from your rig, and you're a little shy about people knowing about you work, living this way. Right, because I'm a professional and, um, yeah, just want to stay on the down low. Right, so putting your face out there and employers still are, you know, they're open to working home from home. Yeah. But working from the rig and traveling everywhere, that seems to be pushing it. That might be pushing it. <laughs> yeah, and why, why push it? Why push it? Yeah, exactly. I, I, my phone rings, I pick it up. I right. have a meeting, I go. Yeah. So I don't want to stress anybody out. Right, yeah, yeah. So, but it was the ideal opportunity to go mobile live as nomadic as you want to. Yeah, I've been wanting to do it for years and then my company moved and I sat at home and worked remotely for two years and actually kind of got depressed and anxious and sad to not have like community around me and not be doing things. And um, so I decided to, yeah, hit the road. See, you know, because I was already like phoning in from the beach half the time anyway, so <laughs> I knew I could work remotely. I knew that my Verizon jetpack could hook me up just about anywhere and my phone would ring and show up for the conference calls and stuff. And yeah, so I actually think my work has improved. Really? Well, that, I'm sure your employer is delighted by that. Yeah, well, I work in a creative field and, you know, you need to be stress-free and relaxed and... You know, creativity takes some special and unique um, background and what's going on around you to be at its best. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you're sitting at home and feeling sad and bored and anxious, I don't think that's conducive for good creative work. So, yeah. So hitting the road, I feel free. I f certainly feel a lot less stressed. And so how long have you been on the road now? Two months. So just starting out. Yeah. And so far you like it. I like it. Yeah. I feel like, you know, it's, it's like peeling an onion, like slowly the artifices and the stress and the anxiety of like been like each day, I feel lighter, freer, happier. Good. Good. Now I, I love your choice of rigs, but some people will say, how can you live in such a tiny thing? It's just a tiny little camper on a, a Toyota pickup. Yeah. How can you how can you live in that small space? I've been wanting to do this for years, so I've been doing a lot of research and watching your videos and other videos and seeing how people were living full time on the road. And I thought, well, the smallest I could do is you know a 25 foot Airstream. So I bought a 2004 Airstream, and I loved it. And I still had my apartment in the city, and I would you know take little weekend jaunts out and see how you know how life was. But the Airstream was adorable, and but it's also a real pain. It's a pain to tow a trailer. It's a pain to deal with the black tanks and just all the things that come along with a bigger rig. I wanted to be nimble, and I wanted to be able to get into more remote places. And I really want to explore the country. And I'm also in the, in the process of buying a house, and I want to figure out, well, where is that going to be? And I want to be able to pull over at the local cafe and kind of check out the community. And when you're pulling a bigger rig or you're pulling a trailer at all you really have to have a plan you know where am I going to pull over where am I going to spend the night it's just it's surprisingly a big deal and as a single person on the road it's just that much more I think maybe as a couple it might it might make more sense well you know even as a couple you still have to think can I back out of here can I do a circle oh yeah how am I going to get a parking place there's mm -hmm. a cafe with a, a realtor office and I want to go visit yeah how, where am I going to park where am I going to park? Exactly. Right. I mean, you really, yeah, it's kind of eye-opening how much you really have to have a plan together. Right. And if you get yourself down a road you can't get out of, even I had a backup camera, but it's it's not easy to back up a, a big rig. No. And and if and you mentioned going a little further off road into the backcountry, mm -hmm. it's even worse. I didn't want to limit my ability to explore, and I. I knew that if I went smaller, I would I would feel light and agile enough to go where I wanted to go, you know. And so you give up a few things, but ultimately you don't give up anything because you gain so much more freedom. Yeah. Those are all really significant reasons to go with a much smaller rig. 
but you haven't felt crowded. In fact, you just said you were feeling a little big in there. I it was roomy. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I, I was thinking, yeah, that's how your perspective changes so much when you're in 38 square feet looking around and thinking, oh, there's, there's quite a bit of space in here. But I like to be outside. Right. Yeah. So you live out of it and less than in it. Yeah. Well, I do a lot of work inside, you know, but I was at a small desk in a studio apartment in a big city before. So, you know, if you ever think about how much of a space do you actually use in a home or apartment? Yeah. And how much do you just walk back and forth? Yeah. There's very little space you actually use. Yeah. I have, I have everything that my apartment had. Right. Just in less space. But then I've got miles of outdoor space to hike and explore and look and yeah and i like the community out here and if i want more space i set up a table outside and do my work outside yes absolutely you could do that so we've moved around to see the other side of your rig and i see you have a shower tent set up you don't have a uh ba a bathroom in the rig right i don't have a bathroom in a rig because half ton trucks can't actually carry that much weight so a camper that is the right size for a half ton truck usually will not have a shower or a bathroom inside the rig and so um, i bought this from a neighbor here and uh, set up an outside shower i actually prefer it and so that's that's not a problem for you not having a sh an indoor shower you, uh, or a bathroom you've adapted to that yeah i've adapted just fine and i i really love it but i grew up Many years as a teenager, we lived, my mom is an artist, and we didn't have electricity, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of a rare person that lived, you know, part of our youth without electricity, so we had an outhouse. I don't mind it at all. So okay. you just, you do a sponge bath or something like that to well, take the shower? put the shower in there oh, and oh. do a full shower. Okay, and uh, you still so use a shower bag? Yeah, uh, you can either heat it in the sun or boil water before. You know, people think they have to have a shower and a, and a flush toilet, hot water and flush toilet. Mm -hmm. 150 years ago, no one had those things. If you if you have that stuff, then you have a bigger rig and you have more things that you have to tow around and deal with. You know, as soon as you get yourself into bigger tanks and black water tanks, it's, a, it's just a whole nother game. And there goes your sense of freedom. Yes. Uh, it costs exactly. you much more money to drag the weight around. Yeah. Uh, you co that costs you a lot. Mm -hmm. But if you're willing to do without it, you can get an amazing rig like yours. Yeah. So let's talk about your setup. You have a, uh, it's a Toyota Tundra. Yeah. Four-wheel drive, I see. It's a four-wheel drive because I wanted to, I travel solo, and I wanted to be able to go off-road wherever I wanted to go and know that I wasn't going to get stuck. And if I did get stuck, I could get myself out of it. So right. I really wanted that confidence. I wanted the flexibility to go anywhere and then the confidence to be able to get out of it. And basically, as soon as I hit the road, I got myself stuck in some, <laughs> some uh, mud uh, up in northern Nevada at some hot springs. And... <laughs> I was so remote. I had been driving for hours, hadn't seen another human being. So I was glad to put it in four-wheel drive and get out of there. So you were in two-wheel drive, just put it in four-wheel drive and drove right out? Drove right out, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's exactly how most people think, well, four-wheel drive, you're just going to go in the middle of nowhere, get stuck and be, be there forever. Spend $1,500 for a tow. But no. You, you just don't. You use common sense and you go as far as two-wheel drive will take you, you put it in four-wheel drive and then you drive back out. Uh, and so, um, what kind of gas mileage are you getting with the Toyota? Well, it doesn't get great gas mileage, but no. it never did. And I drive kind of fast, so it gets 13 and a half miles per gallon. And I would do better if I slowed down. Right. It's got a V8, so you got a lot of power. A lot of power and then the four-wheel drive. At the weight and uh, the gearing. Mm -hmm. But the gas mileage didn't really go down that much when I put the camper on it. No, I wouldn't think so. Uh, it's pretty streamlined. I would think it'd be good. Yeah. And But that's still probably a whole lot better than you were getting with the uh, Airstream in a truck. Yeah. So it's not great, but it's a big improvement. It's a big improvement. And to have the flexibility of the four-wheel drive, I don't know. It just takes a lot of stress off. And I'm sure you've gone many, many places you wouldn't even consider taking an Airstream. Yes. Yeah, I don't know that I would even take my Airstream here. Yeah, it's a bouncy road. It's a bouncy road, and they're expensive rigs, and there's a lot of big rocks. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. That's a good point. Okay, so now uh, you have a seven-foot bed, six-foot bed? 
This is a six foot bed. Uh, tell us about your camper. This is a 2013 um, four wheel camper and I feel so lucky to have found it because I searched for a long time to find a light enough camper and I finally decided that there wasn't really a good hard sided camper that was light enough for the truck. So I was going to get a four wheel pop up camper but I had seen your video, like I think you had blogged about the problems with the pop-up campers and I was hesitant, but that's kind of the only my only option. And this came online on Craigslist and I called the woman and I bought it that day. I, I was so excited to find it. So they made 40 of these. So did you buy it new or yeah, it was used off Craigslist? It was used off of Craigslist, yep. They made 40 of these? They only made 40 <laughs> of them and I got one, yeah. And then they stopped making them? They stopped making them and I went to Four Wheel Camper to, uh, so they could do the plug for the truck. To, so the camper would plug into the truck because they have a special plug. And I asked them about it. I said, why don't you make more of these? I know people would want them. And they said, it's such a niche market and they're so expensive to build. We couldn't make any money off of it. So we're just sticking with the pop-up campers. Wow. So you were very, very fortunate. I was, Yeah, it came as a surprise to me. That they even made hard sided. I didn't know they did. Apparently they don't. They don't. <laughs> You've got one of the rare ones. There's 40 of them. There's 39 out there. <laughs> Other than yours, and you're yeah. probably not selling yours right away. Not right now. Yeah. You know. And so, do you know how much it weighs? Well, the sticker says it weighs 1,100 pounds, but the thing anyone who's interested in truck campers should know is that they're way heavier than the stickers say way heavier and I think the certified weight was 1500 pounds and even then it probably was about 1500 pounds but when they weigh them and tell you what the weight is they're not including the jacks they sometimes aren't including refrigerator they're definitely not including batteries so they do weigh more than than you think but it, this one should weigh about 1500 and what is your uh, Toyota rated at? Well, because this is a four-wheel drive it's rated at 1650 so I'm already with this very light camper a little bit overweight. Right. When you add all in your stuff. Yeah. Right. Easily you're overweight. You're probably 2,000 pounds, I'd guess, minimum. I probably am. Yeah. You... It doesn't handle badly at all, but I do have airbags. Airbags make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, have you weighed it since you've had it? No, no, I haven't. I'd be curious to know. <laughs> I'd be curious too. <laughs> Although you might be afraid to know. <laughs> I might not want to know. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to give it up. I don't want to scare myself. I'm careful and I do keep it very minimal inside and I don't drive around with a lot of weight, a lot of water unless I need to. So So it does have water tanks. Yeah, it does. How, it carries about 15 gallons of water. Which is good. And you carry, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a few extra gallons. And yeah. That goes a long ways. Oh yeah, it yeah. really does. So you decided against the pop-up, uh, did you have a specific reason why you went with a hard sided rather than a pop-up? Well, I thought I was going to have to get a pop-up for this truck, but um, I wanted a hard sided. Uh, it feels safer as a woman traveling solo. It just feels safer to have four walls, both for, you know, anything and, and critters coming in, bears or whatever, because I'd like to go, you know, back into the woods. But, and also the, the mold, the condensation, I, right. yeah. Uh, in the wind and cold in yeah. the winter? Yep. Uh, yeah, I don't recommend them. So uh, you have so little stuff inside the rig, you must have a lot here in the back seat. I use the back for extra storage. The seats fold up and I keep a bin in here where I keep extra paper products. I have a first aid kit in here and um, just a few spare parts and then I have a folding table which you know when I want to put my desk outside and I have a small uh, set of tools. And on the other side I have a coat. Um, I have some cocoa core for my composting toilet and I have actually some things to give away in a straw hat. Well, you know, of, of all, I've I've been inside a lot of rigs and videoed a lot of rigs. I think you have the least amount of stuff of anyone I've ever seen. Well, maybe one or two exceptions, but top five. Uh, do you consider yourself a minimalist? I don't consider myself a minimalist. I actually think it's funny. I I feel very abundant. I I've got stuff packed everywhere. I've got, I could be out here for months with this stuff I've got stored here and there. I have done a lot of extended backpacking with just a small backpack and a tarp. So I feel that this is actually luxurious living to have. I have an extremely soft bed. I have a heater. I 
have water, I have a stove, I've got a refrigerator, and I have a freezer. I mean, I have cold, I have cold beer in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> so this is luxurious. I have more than I need, and there's stuff in here I'm going to give away at the RTR. Uh, so we're not going to both fit in here. Let me get you started just by seeing from the doorway. See, we're standing in the doorway, and because uh, it's small. It's uh, six foot and then the cab over. Standard, pretty much a standard dinette. Uh, her, her workspace, uh, seating space behind the, and then a uh, kitchen. Pretty good sized kitchen, really. Yeah, I, what I love about that kitchen, it's got a two burner stove and a big sink. Okay, why don't you step in mm -hmm. and uh, take us on the $10 tour. Oh, the $10 tour. Yeah, okay. a big one. Well, this is a three-way Dometic fridge, which I love, and it holds a lot of food, and it has a big freezer, which is way overpacked right now. <laughs> That's a <laughs> cool one. Uh, yeah, so that's from my Trader Joe's run, but keeps a lot of fresh food in here, and it really is very efficient on the mm -hmm. propane. We have a furnace. We have... Have you used it? Oh, yes, and it works very well. And then we have drawers for silverware and stuff. Cupboards here for things. I keep pots and pans in here. A lot, actually, a lot of storage. That little wall is very well used. It has a lot of storage. storage. And then I love this glass top on these because you have counter space, or you can open it up and cook. That is nice and hinged, so it's not flopping around. Everywhere. Yeah, and I don't worry about these handles getting knocked and gas. You know. Right. Just it. That's a good point. And then this, I love this big. Same thing. thing, kind of a splash guard. Yep. Really nice. That's well designed. Yeah, I, I love that. And then all my food is up here. Well, both that's dog food, but food storage for food. And one more over on that yeah. side. I used to keep dishes up here, but because I wanted to go out longer, I put more food up here. Very, very good storage. So there's storage here where I keep all my bathroom supplies. Right. Including my curlers, because I'm still a girl. <laughs> kind of have a little girly. And an air horn, because I read on the forum, that's good if you have like a bear outside or it's something very outside. Good. Ah. I keep my clothes in here. And this actually holds a ton of clothes. It goes deep. And uh, yeah, I've never, I never need more clothes than I've got in there. And then this comes off and this folds over and would create a, another bed. Or like a lounge if you just want to have a lounge. In. And I'm using the sheepskin because I was up in the snow and this kind of helped insulate and make it warmer in here. It really is remarkably organized and, uh, mm -hmm. and yet uh, lots of storage and yet open feeling also at the yeah. same time. That's hard to do. And then the bed actually this slides out and can become a queen size bed. So you have a lot more headroom if you pull it out. And do you generally pull it out? I pull it out about halfway. Mm -hmm. And then this big pillow has an extra sleeping bag in it. So if I get really cold, it's got a nice down sleeping bag in it. So she used the pillows as storage for things. And then it has a two vents. And I think these two vents are essential. <laughs> because when this fan is on, pulling out, it's pulling air down over the bed so you get like a fan feeling over your bed. Kind of, a, that must be a fantastic fan. Yeah, yeah. Then they are fantastic. Yeah. And a nice, uh, look like LEDs. Yeah, these are all LEDs. And one of the things I did because I work in film production, <laughs> in film we use these gels over lights to adjust the quality of light and you can get colored gels or this is just a diffusion so I cut it out and put it in there and it diffuses this so it's not that kind of glaring um, bright LED. 
How much did you pay for the camper? I bought it used. They, the couple, had bought it brand new. They used it twice. They paid over twenty two thousand for it, and I got it for eleven five. Oh my! That was a screaming deal. And I love these. Like I've got two big deep uh, cell batteries in there, and then I, you know, you've got your little plugins here. You can turn it on or off power here and then I'm gonna get solar set up you don't have solar now I don't have solar now but the batteries have I've been out here for several days and uh, you charge while you drive you charge while I drive and do you find the roof is too tall on the bed the roof on the bed I mean, is too short no and no? I'm, I'm really tall right you're you're fairly tall yeah no it's very cozy up there it's when you pull that bed out you have a lot more head space you could easily fit two people up there oh. Very comfortably. Yeah. Mm hmm Good. Well, thank you so much for the tour. That was the $10 tour. So this is your um, your outdoor porta potty shower tent. This is my shower and porta potty combo. This is a sea head composting toilet, which I really love. I think it works really well. It fits in the camper. You can use it in the camper. I like having it outside. Um, and then I pull it out when I want to take a shower and hang up a portable solar shower stand in here. It works really well. Basically, Bob, once I figured out the toilet shower situation, my, my whole feeling about what I was doing changed. I felt like I could just do this forever. And I don't think you need a sea head to, to do this. I think even just an $80 portable toilet would mm -hmm. be just as fine. And then I have my um, gray water coming out there, so I use the, gray, the soapy gray water to flush. Oh, what a good idea that is. Double use. Mm -hmm. Well, Christine, thank you so much for the tour. Uh, I really appreciate that. And uh, I think everyone's just really going to enjoy learning all about your life and your rig. Well, thank you, Bob. Thanks for keeping us inspired and yeah. motivating us to hit the road. My, it's very truly my pleasure. So, everyone, thanks for watching this video. And uh, as usual, like and subscribe. And uh, tell your friends that they have an option for a different and, I think, better life. And so do you. So one of the questions I ask most people I interview is, were you afraid when you thought about becoming a nomad on wheels and then as you actually did it, and now that you've done it for a few months, were you afraid? Was the fear justified? How did that work for you? I wasn't afraid. I've done a lot of traveling. I've actually done a lot of hitchhiking, too. But my family's afraid, but I'm not afraid. I, I've seen more weirdos and strange things in the city. So out here, no, I, I feel safe. You feel safer here than you did in the city. I am safer out here than I am in the city. I think statistically that's certainly true. Well, there's hardly anyone out here. So right. Who's so out here? The statistics of a wacko being out here, and then they'd have to come find. Like, it's just very, it's rare. It's rare to come across an axe murderer anyway. Anywhere. Anywhere. But you have to live your life. I mean, if you can live in fear or you can go out and enjoy your life and discover the world really isn't scary at all. Uh, almost everyone I've talked to said, yes, they were a little afraid, or maybe they weren't. But for every person out here that was a little sketchy, they met a dozen who were wonderful. Uh, yes, exactly. And you can always move your rig. You can always move your rig. Drive away. Yeah. Right. No, I, I feel very safe out here, and um, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Good. Uh, but your family, I'm sure, like you said, were very fearful. Yeah, they think I've lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> they do. And how do you cope with that? Do you Living in a van by the river, that's kind of what they think, yeah. which is oddly, I'm, uh, in my family, I, I have the biggest career of any of them. So how do I deal with it? I don't know. This is very new. They're coping with it. I'm, uh, you know, I'm just... I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully with time, they'll just adapt. They'll see that this really is good. I think so. You know, when I had the Airstream, they weren't afraid. But there's a perception when you go this small or this minimal that somehow this is over the deep end. Mm -hmm. 
but you know, it's not. It's not. No. It's just a perception. The size really freaks people out. Just the fact that it's small. Yeah, I have a family of you know artists and you know free thinkers, but when they saw how, the, how small it, yeah, they started worrying. But there's no reason to worry. No, you know, that's what you've discovered. There really is no reason. Mm-hmm.